Welcome to our Corona TaxWise webinar program. If you've got any questions at all, make sure you call the Tax or the VAT advice line. If you're not a client, give us a call on the number on the screen. Hello and welcome to this um, short webinar on behalf of uh, Krona uh, TaxWise. My name is Norman Allison. I'm one of the tax uh, lecturers and uh, consultants of uh, Mercia, Mercia Group. Um, I've just really wanted to spend a, a few minutes just reminding um, practitioners, accountants, etc., about the new notification requirements um, that really are not that far away at all. Now, this goes back to um, Finance Act um, 2015 which included um, the International Tax Compliance Client Notification Regulations, and they came into force on the 30th of September um, 2016. And these place a requirement on financial institutions and other advisors to notify their clients about information that the revenue will be receiving under, under international um, tax agreements to improve tax disclosure. And we, as accountants, tax consultants, are within the definition of other advisors. Now, the key point that I've been really stressing um, over the last few months on, on the lecture circuit is that potentially the firm is liable to a penalty of th up to £3,000 if they fail to comply with these notification requirements. I would stress that that is not a £3,000 per, pe per client penalty, but nevertheless £3,000 per firm is a fairly significant penalty. In essence, to establish if you are caught by these um, regu regulations, what we've got to identify is that us as a practice, as an accountant, have we given offshore advice or services to any client in the relevant period that does not meet, the, meet any of the exemptions. Now this definition of offshore advice or services is very wide ranging and it includes advice or services in respect of any asset held outside the UK but within the jurisdictions participating in the common reporting standard. Now there are probably about a hundred of our countries involved in this. Uh, America is actually not on, on the list but is added to in the notification regulations. The critical date is that we need to identify clients and we need to send the notification to clients by the 31st of August 2017, which of course is not many weeks away at all, at all bearing in mind we're coming into um, holiday season of course. Now in effect, there are two ways to actually consider really doing this in practice. First approach is the specific approach where really what that means is line by line, you go through your client list to identify any such clients. Now that of course may take a considerable period of time to actually do. What we are looking for in effect is did we provide any such advice in respect of the year ended the 30th of September 2016. And of course, that's getting on for a year or so ago, ago now. Again, we may not be sure, may not be able to remember if we did. So this specific approach going through line by line of our client um, bank could take a considerable period of time and therefore pulling out those clients potentially we will need to notify. The other approach which again, I've been speaking to a lot of accountants uh, about this on the lecture circuit, is the more general approach, where in effect what you are doing is identifying any client that you have, uh, the, that you have provided personal tax services to in that relevant period, as I say, the year ended 30 September 16, and in effect sending all of those clients the required notification. Um, and I must admit, most firms of accountants I've been speaking to, in terms of the timing, i.e. this needs to be done by the 31st of August um, 2017, um, are telling me that that is pretty much the approach they are adopting, i.e. they are just blanket coverage um, in respect of all clients. Now, in terms of the notification, what actually needs to be sent out, it is a standardised um, letter from, from your firm, but you will include a HMRC branded document 
Now that branded document is available, I saw the other day on, on gov.uk. And in effect, that document from the revenue really just points out to the client that if they've got any offshore um, income, etc., that hasn't been disclosed, then they do need to take the opportunity to get their affairs in order. And it does make references um, to um, a, a fact sheet um, as, as well. You can send this notification by email as well. If that is the usual method that you do um, correspond with your clients, and you are fairly certain that the client is actually going, going to read the email, i.e. Not, not, not delete it, I think is really what, what they're getting at. Um, there are a couple of exemptions um, from this requirement, i.e. for it's really in respect of those clients who were not resident in the tax year 2015-16, and indeed will not be resident for 2016-17, and any clients who will probably, what the revenue say, not be clients after the 30th of September um, 2016. So that really is, is, is in a nutshell. There's two approaches to do. As I say, the specific client by client, go through, pull them out, those ones you need to contact. Or the more general approach, as I say, um, for those clients where we're effectively we're just going to um, blanket a ma email or, or send out a, a mass mailing um, to those clients. I must stress as well that the guidance from the revenue on this is that this is, this is more than actually just filling in a, a return. So if your client has had income offshore and you have merely just completed the entries on the return to identify uh, that, that income, that is, not, that is effectively not caught within these provisions. It's, it's more than just completing the, the, the normal tax return. But as, as I said, having said that, many accounts as I've met are just taking the opportunity to go down the general, the general approach. Okay, well, I hope that has been um, of use um, to you and you have found, found that of, of interest. As I say, that deadline is very much um, far, fast approaching. Hope you've enjoyed this um, short webinar. Thank you.